Hello, I'm here, I'm Olivia DeBell Bird, and I'm here at the wonderful Dothan uh, Houston Library. And this is with the Local Author Showcase, which we are doing by video, because as you all know, we are reading in the age of the coronavirus. I'm here with Ashley Bynum, who is a programming specialist, and this is her creative um, idea. And uh, thank you, Ashley, from all the authors. I think it is a wonderful, wonderful idea. Um, my book it's Miss Hildreth War Brown, Anecdotes of a Southern Belle. As you can tell, I'm dressed like the cover of the book. It is 41 very humorous anecdotes, Southern anecdotes, but also just about everyday life because we Southerners can laugh at just about anything. Uh, I'm going to read one of my anecdotes, and I picked this because um, it's a lot about my husband. And I realized that many of us have been in quarantine, and this is probably the longest we've spent with our husbands since we were on our honeymoon. I, did we say for better or for worse? Okay, this is called Chanel Number no. 5. My husbands do not do malls. The last time he was in a mall, my son was four years old, and he took him Christmas shopping for my gifts. My son is about to draw Social Security, so you do the math. Okay, so I exaggerated a teeny bit, but you get the picture. Anyway, for some unknown reason, my husband decided to go for Father of the Year Award this particular year. With our four-year-old son in tow and my list, off they went. After an hour or so, my son, who has been known to be a bit active, came bounding into the house shouting, Mom, guess what we bought you? And spoil the surprise, I said. Insisting, he said, just guess one thing, it smells good. Perfume, I ventured. Yes, he exclaimed, and it's channel number five. Did I mention he watched the occasional TV? And Mom, it cost $75.90 and Dad almost died. Well, I tell you, I had to laugh out loud. I knew my husband thought he was going in that store for a $5 bottle of perfume. He had no clue women willingly took out loans for trifle, trifles such as a fragrance. So, here he is with his spirit of giving smile glued on, shelling out 75 big ones, all the while muttering under his breath about paying this much money for something that evaporates five minutes after you dab it on. This became doubly humorous as the rest of the day was related to me. Our local Dairy Queen had been aggressively advertising their newest concoction named The Blizzard, which our four-year-old had been begging to try. As the ad went, The Blizzard was made of ice cream so thick you could literally turn it upside down. So still working on the Father of the Year Award, my husband ended their little outing at the Dairy Queen. Much to my spouse's dismay, he soon discovered the blizzard cost $2.95. For the second time that day, he died as he was still under the illusion a scoop of ice cream cost $0.25. Cents. Exiting and grumbling mighty about the cost of paying almost $3 for ice cream, our darling son spoke up, But Dad, the reason it costs so much is because it's so thick, you can turn it upside down, and immediately proceeded to demonstrate. Do the words Fox Advertising ring a bell here? There is my husband, just having dished out $75 for perfume, looking at $3 worth of ice cream melting on the pavement at his feet. I really got him good, though. The day after Christmas, I faked spilling the entire bottle of Chanel No. 5. The man nearly had a coronary. I think he called the fire department. I couldn't help it. The devil made me do it, and him trying so hard to win Father of the Year Award. Since my, father does, since my husband doesn't do malls, he doesn't do card shops either. Rather, he fancies himself a Hallmark card writer. Either that or he hates paying three ninety five for a piece of paper you discard the next day. Regardless, every occasion I receive a home mail card from my husband. It's become his trademark. Well, my all-time favorite is the Valentine I opened a few years back. It had a stick figure Cupid running across the page. Written in red block letters inside a lopsided heart were the words, I can think of a hundred reasons why I love you. Upon opening the card, there lay a hundred dollar bill with the message, Don't you wish I could think of a million? Besides being a master of creating homemade cards, my husband also has a knack for turning a faux pas into a witticism. I suspect it comes from years of practice covering up his own personal gaffes. 
We were at an exceptionally nice dinner party at the lovely home of friends. The wife had pulled out all the stops using her fine china and silver crystal. It was a scrumptious gourmet meal. My husband is not known to be very discerning about food. In fact, he's so undiscerning he thinks I'm a good cook, which works for me. I'm certainly not a finicky eater, but I do have my limits. I prefer to at least have a name for what I'm putting in my mouth. Anyway, the salad course came and there was a strange looking, I assumed, vegetable on my plate. Knowing my husband's penchant for eating anything, I quietly asked him to sample this unknown food and tell me what it was. He gnawed a few minutes, then he whispered, paper towel, bounty. I couldn't wait to get the hostess in the kitchen. We're very good friends and she's great fun. When I related this little tale she howled, I put a paper towel at the bottom of the greens and forgot about it. By the time I started to toss, it was too late. I just hoped no one would notice. She was a great sport about the entire thing. I was preparing to Caesar salad the other night for dinner and called to my husband. Which do you want with your salad, brownie or bounty? Surprise me, he said. So thank you so much for being with me today and sharing a little Southern humor. Uh, enjoy reading and stay safe out there. And again, thank you to the Dothan Library, the Dothan System Library. This has been a great opportunity.